Hallelujah. Everybody, let's go ahead and stand up this morning.
never saw in the light And I know there's a God who cares And I know He broke all my snares So be still Now, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Be still. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? We remind you constantly that, that um, he is the great I am and that we are loved by him. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, good to have you. Um, post fellowship weekend from last weekend. But that's all right. We got one coming up next month. <laughs> And then the month after, hallelujah, um, <clears throat> next month will be our homecoming church dedication service. That will be on September the 25th, I believe that is the date, um, Sunday, September 25th, we have the morning service. Uh, at the end of the service, we will go, we'll have a, a special dedication service, um, falling right after the regular ministry service. And, um, and then we're going to, if we can get it all done right, going to go outside and cut the ribbon and uh, hallelujah, all that stuff. And then we're having dinner on the grounds, uh, catered by Sidwell's. 
Hallelujah. And if you've had Sid Bills before, you'll be going, glory. If you haven't had it before, afterwards you'll be going, glory. Hallelujah. Um, but we're going to bring our own desserts, our own tea, our own drinks. They're, they're bringing the main course. Okay. So I think right now it's roasted chicken, baked ham, uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and cabbage and cornbread. Okay. We are going to ask some of y'all to, to fill in some of the veggies with some extras. Hallelujah. Like uh, macaroni and cheese. Somebody who, who likes to make macaroni and cheese? Tim likes to make macaroni and cheese. Okay. Well, that was, that was, I mean, everybody just jumped all over that one like ugly on a monkey. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we'll be, you know, we'll, we'll provide our own, you know, like tea and all that stuff. They're bringing their main course for us out here. And, um, so as soon as we finish, then we'll go over and we'll go out and we'll have our uh, dinner on the grounds. So homecoming, church dedication. Uh, Reverend Ted Gregorich, did I get it right? Ah, I got it right. Um, Dean of Rhema Bible Training Center will be with us uh, doing the service. Hallelujah. That's the third. That's three of the deans from Rhema has been here. Uh, Tony Cook and um, Marvin Yoder, who was just with us in May. And then uh, Brother Tad's been with us before. So uh, I don't know how many deans they've had at Rama over the years, um, about eight to nine. Uh, but we have had three of them. Hallelujah. Huh? 333. Hey, there you go. You know, that's a good batting average. Actually, now in Major League Baseball, if you hit 250, you got a good bat. I'm like, you got to be kidding. They used to wash guys out for hitting 250. Now, if you hit 250, you're a super hitter. You pitch well. But so have the steroid monster hitters. Yeah. So anyway, uh, praise the Lord. That, and then, then at the end of October, the 1st of November, we'll set that date, will be our annual Down East Barbecue and Fried Chicken. Now, this year, we're not going to combine it with another church. We did a lot of work. I mean, we did a lot of work for that meal and uh, fed two churches. And um, anyway, it's just going to be us <laughs> and anybody that shows up for us. <coughs> okay. And um, I'm, I'm hoping by then we'll have our storage unit built back here. So everything's on site, our, our cookers and all that stuff. We'll, we haven't gotten a price yet. <laughs> Talk to Jody. Talk to his band. Okay. Hallelujah. They, we, they came out and talked to me the first week, but never got back with the price. Yeah. So I need, you know, I'm ready to, I'm, if it's the right price, I'm ready to roll. Like, roll. Like wagon train. Roll them, roll them, roll them. Hallelujah. Actually, we haven't priced out that and the front entrance awning. Uh, let's see what we can do about, you know, I'd love to have all that done by homecoming. That would be great. Amen. So we'll just, we'll have to see how it all works out and the prices hit the right price points. Yada, yada, yada. Glory to God. Uh, we're talking about doing a um, wooden open framed a frame with exposed beams that are stained, you know, the color of everything out there with, with a brown roof on that metal roof on that. And um, you know, so if we get the right price point, we're going to do that. If we don't get the right price point, Pastor Ed's going to be doing it this winter. You saw the joy. You heard the joy, didn't you? Just, just, just thrilled of the, the thought. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Well, that, that's all those announcements. Praise the Lord. Don't forget Wednesday night Bible study. This week will be the last Wednesday night of prayer before Bible study. Then we revert back to the um, Zoom prayer on the following week. Okay. School starts back. It's just, is that we huh? She won't be here that week that we're reverting back. We have to skip a week. Okay. The, the, Jess and Cap leave Tuesday for Turkey. And they'll be gone for 10 days, like 10, 10 11 days. Uh, they'll be gone to Turkey. And uh, they'll be um, 
traveling in Turkey and going to the big MENA conference and ministering in the youth service and, um, you know, uh, helping and having meetings with MENA on uh, plants and so forth. And that's the thing I will say publicly. Okay, plants. Put it back on. Hallelujah. And welcome back. We just had to cover some stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. First year in the building, obviously. Um, we're making some, you know, we're, we're about to, we're getting close to wrapping up expenditures. Hallelujah. <laughs> and of course, this next two steps of the, the awning and the building are going to be our, probably our biggest expenditures so far. Um, and, um, are y'all doing lights today? Yes. So they're coming to hang lights. They want, we got to get, I got to get them wired sometime, but we're putting lights. Joe's coming tomorrow, I think, and we're going to get the uh, post on the ground for the uh, outdoor thing, which is going to wrap up outdoors. Right. Anybody off during the week who wants to help? We're going out there with big four by four posts and putting them in the ground, putting concrete around them and nailing them up and that kind of stuff. Six by six by six, eight, ten foot long. Yeah, six by six. No, we'll be on four by sixes. Four by sixes, yeah. They just don't warp as bad as a four by four, but, you know, yeah. Unless they're like $5 difference in price. You know, then we may go with six by six. We'll see when we get there. Okay, but if they're $35 price difference, we're not doing that. Yeah. All right. Um, putting four, putting six, those holes that I've, Argued up out there, we're putting posts in the ground and create the, the trellis for the low-level lighting over the fire pit for fellowships. 
Now, we do have benches that need to be put together, a little table that needs to be put together. Um, I didn't see any hands go up for all fair in a week. Okay. All right. Me and Joe. Against the world, looks like me and Joe. Against the world. So I mean, though, that if you can't, if I can't, you can't handle me singing a song that talks about what you just said, we can't be friends. Because yeah. <laughs> Janie's always going, he, it's always a song with him. She says something, then I'll sing a song, you know. Or the kids will say, then I'm singing a song, you know. And, and of course, my lyrics to the song. <laughs> I modify the lyrics to fit the phrase. All right. <clears throat> it's time to give if you need an offering envelope. Um, oh, those that weren't here Wednesday or didn't get the, the uh, thing, we now are legally Expedition Church of the Triad Incorporated. Hallelujah. Uh, that has been registered with the Secretary of State. We uh, now have uh, gone through to all of our um, accounts payable, all of the companies we do business with, gone to the bank. Uh, we have put in the name changes with all of them. Hallelujah. Some of them required paperwork. Some of it required just, you know, whatever kind of verifications. But um, we will be, if you use the P.O. Box 7752 in Greensboro to do any correspondence with a church, stop. <laughs> we got about two months, and that's going to be no, no more. We have got a P.O. Box here in Pleasant Garden now. We are, Pleasant Gar we are P.O. Box 306 27313. Okay. Um, so we have now got a permanent address here at the building, a P.O. box here in Pleasant Garden. We're closing down the 7752, and we're shooting for the weekend before the first Sunday of September, um, or the, right before the first Sunday of September, to change over all of our electronic apps, which means at that point, we'll announce it, we'll let you know, you won't be able to use the old hashtags, okay? They're gonna, they're, they won't be any good anymore because we have to change those. So we'll be changing the hashtags and all that stuff. So uh, we will let you know, but be aware, you're going to need to go into your app and change that. If you'll be using like a, you know, I pull up Cash App and hit the button, you're going to have to change that hashtag in your stuff. Okay? Okay. Not yet. We'll let you know when. All right? But it's, it's coming, and it's coming into this month. Um, so, that, you know, there's a lot to a name change. It's not just change the name, praise the Lord. Well, you know, there's a, I spent about six hours on the phone on Friday, calling places and going through the process and, and, and all that change of the name. Some of them had to create new accounts. Why? I don't know. Close the old account, create a new account. I mean, you know, like, oh gosh, church credit cards had to reissue new cards in the church, the new name. I mean, all this stuff, it was just a lot to it, but we are legal. Nobody can come in here and take our name. Okay, they can't come in here and go, well, we, we got it legally first. You got to change it. No, we are legal. I was kind of hanging over our head a little bit, you know. What if somebody came in and then they sued us for using their name, you know. But uh, we were doing kind of an AKA. But now we're legal. The Expedition Church of the Triad, Faith and Victory Church of Greensboro is no longer our legal name. It, you still go to the Secretary of State, it says previous legal name, Faith and Victory Church of Greensboro. That's our previous. It's no longer our name. We are. Expedition Church of the Triad. Doesn't that sound cool? <laughs> Incorporated. All right. Hallelujah. Time to give to Expedition Church of the Triad. Hallelujah. If you're online, we're still using the old hashtags as of now. Uh, dollar sign Faith Victory Church and donations at FBC.org. Cash app and PayPal. Uh, giving uh, cash, you know, giving with check. It is now Expedition Church of the Triad. Hallelujah. Some of you have been doing that all along this year. That's fine. Um, they've been taking it. Hadn't said anything, so we've been using it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, if you're giving electronically, still use the old hashtags until we tell you different, which will be the end of this month. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right. Y'all ready to give? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give. Thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them, and you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, receive the in-house offering. Those of you that are sending electronically, thank you. Those of you that just came and showed up at church, thank you. We just love everybody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forever. Amen. And 
looks like uh, we don't have everybody here this morning. Y'all, uh, go ahead, Tim. Go for it, buddy. Miss Jane's awaiting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say glory. glory. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the second chapter of the book of Acts. And uh, Shannon, I don't know how good of a catch you are. Hurt, didn't it? Oh, okay. <laughs> she, Shannon, I know Shannon. She could be going, it's hurting, it's hurting. She would go, no, it didn't hurt. She learned from Kathy Redwin. Well, that, this is true. Yeah. Be, he be careful who your kids hang around. <laughs> so who's Kathy Redwin? Her sister. <laughs> Used to hold Karen upside down in the toilet and wash, flush her hair down. <laughs> oh, me. And she still loves her. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 45. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers, that fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, had all things common, and they sold their possessions and good and part of them to all men as every man had need. And we are, we're taking from this the church and her mission. And uh, we talked about um, on our first service along this lines, what is, this is a question, you have an opportunity to get 100 by participating. Oh God, getting in school mode. Pray for us one week and one day. Shannon and Nathan tomorrow. Yeah. But what is the ultimate end of everything we do in the church? What? Evangelize. Everything we do in equipping you, training you, developing you, discipling you, teaching you who, who you are in Christ. I mean, making solid families. Everything is done to the end result to evangelize and go reach the lost. Amen. To make you more effective at reaching the lost. Solid families help you reach families. Amen. Making you a, knowing who you are in Christ, understanding how to win in life helps you go to people who are hurting and in need. Everything we're about is to reach the lost. So when we preach new creation realities and tell you who you are in Christ and grow you up in the new creation realities and make you a strong Christian, it's so you can be better equipped to go reach the lost. So our mission, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, the second person of the Godhead, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Lord, our Master is what? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? He that is baptized shall be saved. He that baptized is, is not shall be damned. He that believeth and is baptized shall not be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. What are, what are signs and wonders for? To confirm the word. They went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Miracle signs and wonders. Now, we in the, uh, the charismatic Pentecostal, neo-Pentecostal churches love miracle signs and wonders. And honestly, I do love the flow of the Holy Ghost. I mean, I love, I love me some Holy Ghost. Amen. But we can, we can encapsulate that <coughs> to the point that it's only about having that, that Holy Ghost service and not realizing the purpose of all the miracle signs and wonders is what? Come on now. Louder? This is the choir director. Evangelize. Win the lost. Amen? Well, we're to have signs and wonders following us. We spend more of our time following signs and wonders than we do have them follow us. Thank you for your enthusiasm. That went over real big. I, I noticed that everybody, the, uh, the, the low pressure went in this room, just sucked all the air out. Volkswagen just got pulled in off the street out there. <laughs> Hello. We 
want miracle signs and wonders, but we want them flowing in a way that helps us preach the gospel, confirming the gospel, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. I said, amen. Now it's great to come to church and, and, and there's, listen, <clears throat> not, not opposed to it. As a matter of fact, participate in it, want it, love it. Okay. Are y'all here? You go home. Love the flow of the spirit in the church, but it's, it is an instructional thing as much as anything to you, the believer to have the signs follow you. Amen. I say y'all here. We, we, we want, you got to be around things. I mean, it's good to be around the move of the spirit, but it's not just, you can come to church and, and get around the move of the spirit. It's so that you're equipped to go have the move of the spirit follow you <clears throat> out there where people are hurting. The vast majority of people who are sick and hurting and in need aren't coming to church. That's why he said, go ye. Amen. Go ye. All right. And so uh, we, we, we have established our ultimate goal and what we're doing is to evangelize. And then we talked about how the church gets to this place. Again, sharing these things from this passage of scripture on how the church gets to this place where it is equipped for this evangelism. Now, I know being baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's a, a, a whole nother subject in, in depth anyway, is imperative to this. But we started, first of all, with um, they were unified around the saints. The saints were unified around the doctrine of the church. Talked about you can't, be, you can't be squirrely and flaky and be effective. You just can't. I mean, we, we, we get people who think that the squirrelier they are, the more effective they are. You run people off. Because they, they, I mean, they're, they're like, get me out of here. This guy's a lunatic. You know, um, and then we talked about, um, last week it was, yes, fellowship, koinonia, meaning more than simply sitting down and eating together. It was, we are participants. We are participants together in the body of Christ. We being many are one body. Amen. And then, right, we read from Ephesians chapter 4 and talked about how the every joint supplieth. Amen? To the effectual working. Amen? Remember, he said this, that for the work of the ministry, the gifts are given to what? Equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Okay? And so, uh, fellowship, participation in Christ, not not just eating together. I, I, I like to eat. <clears throat> and when I preached that, we were going to go out and eat. And everybody hung around and ate. Even in that temperature. Even, even as hot as it was, people stayed around and ate. I did. We were down at, at Victory Overlook down there. Also known as Jerry's Place. <laughs> we're not going to put AKA out there, though. Sorry, Jerry. I mean, Jerry had laid dibs in that whole place for himself. Yeah, that's this is Jerry's place out here. Gonna come out here when they have a mini house out there or whatever, the tiny house. Jerry's house. You say, call Janice, where's Jerry? He's out of his place. That ain't gonna work, Jerry. No. Is it Janice? Uh uh. No. Praise the Lord. Now I'm just being silly. So that coin in here, we talked about how that it is. Um, that relationship, that vertical between man and God and God and man, and the horizontal between man and man. The horizontal won't work unless there's a vertical. There has to be the vertical between man and God and God and man for the horizontal man to man to be effective. Okay. And participating in Christ. Hallelujah. And then today we're talking about, uh, uh, let's, let's look to Acts chapter 1. Verse 14, and these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, the mother, Mary, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. Okay, now, they continued in one accord in prayer supplications. The participation in prayers, and remember, 
uh, our main text uh, talks about um, that they believed had all things in common. They, they were, um, they were in breaking of bread and in prayers. Okay. They continued steadfastly in prayers. There is power, unifying power, effective power in corporate prayer. We're standing in it. This is this, this property is the result of corporate prayer. Amen. As we came together and began to pray and seek God about, you know, the 88 vision and so forth. And we would begin to get directed about our land and about uh, speaking over our land and in ways that we haven't really done in the past, this corporate unification around prayer and praying these things out uh, brought this to being. Brought it, brought it to pass in a way that when we tell people the story, they still go, wow. When you get $100,000 off of asking price, that's God. Amen. When you only offered $50,000 off of asking price, anticipating a increase to somewhere in the middle between the two, Honestly, and, and quite frankly, thought maybe even had to pay full price when we were prepared to do it. It would have been harder. It would have been more, it would have been more of a, we would have had less money to do what we're doing here, but still. But to get offered back and counter back at 50 less than what you offered? Boy, that, where did that take place? It took place in prayer. God moving on hearts of people and people being sensitive to the Spirit who were sensitive to the Spirit. Amen. And, and obedient to the voice of God. But that took place through prayer. See, prayer has power in the church. And we accomplish things in prayer that you're not going to accomplish with a picket line sign. Amen. You are most definitely not going to accomplish it on a Facebook argument. <laughs> you're, you're wasting your time. Because the people who post the things that push your button... Or, oh, yeah, well, that too. <laughs> Emissaries of the devil, okay, to eat your time up, yeah. arguing with them that they're not going to change their mind. They don't give a rip what you say. You can give the scripture. You can give them a, a whole Bible of scripture. Yeah, but I know what I believe. You know, <clears throat> I've got my narrative. You're wasting your time. Well, how are we going to accomplish things? Now, listen, we've got our building. Let, let, me, let me back up here just a little bit. Because, and write this down. God does nothing unless there's a purpose. Everything God does has a purpose. Amen. Everything. When he tells you to do something and you think, well, that was just minor. There's a purpose. Well, what's the purpose? Oh, I got to find the deep purpose. Sometimes it's just to teach you obedience. Amen. He might tell you to go, you're, you're driving your car and on the inside, you just feel like I'm supposed to turn right up here and go a different direction. Now, you could go, oh, I missed an accident. You know, I was going to have an accident. That's why I got, no. maybe he just wanted you to obey him. So that when they're about to blow up the embassy in Nigeria, and he says, hit the deck, and you do, and the people beside you are blown away, he taught you obedience, and so you obeyed his voice. The other times, me, it meant nothing. He was leading up to the time he knew it would save your life. So everything God is doing or telling you has a purpose. Y'all here, you going home. How many are here? Okay. So here, let me see. Sean's not here and Cap is not here. And Daniel's not here. Okay. Just, are y'all are y'all here? Daniel. Daniel's still not here. Raise your hand if you're here. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, I was right, Cap. That's a 15 yard penalty. Okay. So, I want to tie this into prayer. We, we, know, we know the story, and we'll tell the story again. On, on Actually, somebody's going to be putting a video together without procrastinating. No name calling. I put one on Nathan's thing the other day. I said, proficientating. The art of going fishing when you're supposed to be doing other things. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you know, God spoke to me at the end of 2018, uh, watching the Carolina Hurricanes play. I like watching her. I like watch hockey. I've gotten really into watching hockey. It's fun. Been in a couple of hockey games last year. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was, it was, it, you know, Cap and I went to one. Nathan Cap and I went to another. Um, it was just, it got the jersey, showed up at the game, you know, you know, official NHL jersey. They bought me for Christmas. I went to bought it for myself because it's too doggone expensive. Anyway, you know, you know, anyway, that's another story. Anyway, I watched the game, and God, and God's, you know, and listen, when we came out of the business park, we were in, I mean, we were in trouble financially. We, the, the, the cost of the lease was just so high. We couldn't, we couldn't keep up with it anymore. We were just sinking, sinking, sinking. We'd use cons, uh, unsecured consumer debt credit cards to keep going because we could, wouldn't shut the doors. We could have shut the doors and gone bankrupt. Of course, I would have had to go personally bankrupt. My name was on it. Okay. I mean, I was personally tied to all that debt. Yep. I lost everything. If we had to shut the church, I would have lost everything, including the church. We lost ministry. We lost personal stuff. I mean, we just gone under. And um, moved into the community center. That took a lot of financial stress off. But then we're trying to pay back all this debt. I mean, you're like, you ever, you ever got stuck in the mud? Yeah. <clears throat> Boy, them wheels are turning. And all you're doing is covering the guy behind the car in mud. Who's trying to push you out and you ain't getting nowhere. Okay. And, um, so, you know, we, I, I don't know how, what you know, see <clears throat> this 2018, we've been out of the business part two years. We come, we brought the debt down some, but not enough that you could even breathe hardly. The Lord said, how much debt are you in? I don't know. <laughs> and right then I didn't care. I was watching hurricanes. I mean, huh? Who's got the puck? I mean, he's, you know, he's going to score. And uh, I don't have had the Lord do this to me many times in my life. But after about a minute, I got the, the stern response from the Lord. Because I heard right down here, why don't you get up and go find out? And he said, how do you? Trust me, I knew it was the Lord. Okay. Just stand on the inside. It was strong. It was strong. But forget it. I, 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 I just have to watch replay. <laughs> So I got up and went to my desk, you know, added it all up, put out all the bills, added it all up. We were $35,580.63 in debt. And most of that was at 29.99%. Consumer credit cards. You know? And we were, I mean, listen, you got, we were at a place in one, at one stage, we were writing checks from one credit card to another credit card after we'd paid it down. After we paid this one down, we took that amount and paid the next one with it. And then when that one got down, paid the back, back went back and paid the other one back. It was, it was just, you weren't going anywhere. We were going nowhere. We need a building. Well, you ain't going to get a building $35,580.63 in consumer debt with about $300 in the bank. And that's because you ain't spent it yet. It's already earmarked. Are you here or are you going home? How did we get there? We got there because the church had gotten to some, some stuff happened. People left and we had this huge lease and no money to pay it with. I mean, you know, you can't pay it if you don't have it. Amen. Where's your faith? Baby, I was using my faith just to get through the next week. Now you made me Mr. Super Faith and go get it all paid off in one moment. 
Hello? Don't be so arrogant about faith. Let me tell you something. You can be arrogant about faith because you ain't never gone through anything. Hello? And then when you, find, you do go through something, you'll find out if you got any or not. Let me say something. The whole time we're going through this, I keep hearing reports. X number of thousands of churches closed their doors this year. X number of churches closed their doors this year. X number of pastors left the ministry. X number of this. I mean, the numbers were high. And don't think. It, was, it took my faith not to become one of those numbers. Are y'all here? It took every bit of faith they had not to become one of those numbers. And so, anyway, we're at this point. The Lord says, you know, and then he gives us the plan. Get out of debt. You'll be out of debt in 18 months, which I'm thinking this is uh, going in 2019. So June of 2020, we'll be out of debt doing this plan. I can live with that. Because we've been living under this pressure, this debt for several, for a number of years. And um, come to you, told the, told the plan, and the money started coming in. Now, let me say this, outside of our congregation, about $3,500 was given to us by other ministries. The interest on the money that time that we, while we were paying it off was $3,500. God has somebody else pay the interest. We paid the, we paid the, the principal and all that money. You did this church money started coming in. You know, the little plan that we had. I mean, you know, think, well, I, I, when I looked at the plan, I think that's not enough money. God just needs us moving. Yeah. He just needs us moving in a direction. So this is, we go, we go into January 2019, give the plan to the church. November 15th, 2019, all $35,580.63 plus interest are paid off. I'm just sitting there. I'm going week by week, taking money and sending it to this. And when one gets paid off, I ran it over here and started adding it to this one. Had them all charted out, you know. Took the lowest one up to the highest one. And we started with the lowest one, paid it off, paid it off the next one, paid 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 off the next one. And then here come the big Mama Thomas, the big ones. Paid off the one, then paid off the other. Glory to God. Now we're having to pay some on all these all along now. Okay, because there, there was a minimum. So November, then by the end of the year, we had, we had about $3,000 or so coming into 2020. Glory. We're like, wow, we got money in the bank. <laughs> <coughs> we really did. And um, so we come into 2020. About March, I got up and preached. I said, guys, this is right before COVID. Now, God didn't get us out of debt for nothing. Remember the purpose. See, God knew what was coming and what was going to be available in advance. But he, if we hadn't obeyed him starting in January of 19, we would not be here in August of 2022. Amen. We wouldn't have closed in January of 2022, three years later. God was giving us something three years in advance Hallelujah. in preparation yeah. for something else that was coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we um, get to about June where we get, you know, we get into the COVID. We lose, we can't go to the community center anymore. Uh, after nine weeks, we started meeting over at Bob Pavlakis Church, New Life, on Sunday afternoons. And as grateful as I am, they opened their doors and we were able to meet weekly after that. I did not like Sunday afternoon church for our main service. I mean, for a secondary service, okay. But, the, you know, get up Sunday morning and you got to wait till one o'clock to start church. That was why I didn't like it. I just didn't, just didn't groove a vibe with me. We're eating lunch before we go to church. I don't like to eat before I go to church. It's not like that. Something very light. But to go eat your meal for your family meal and all that stuff before you go to church, the family didn't like it. I didn't like it. Uh, you know, some, now, maybe some of y'all like it. Maybe some of you late sleepers liked it, but I didn't. Okay? Had a bunch of people talking. Uh, they, just, they, were, they were doing it. 
So we actually started looking in the summer of 2020. We found a building. Thought, wow, this would work. Now, about this time, we got about $6,000 in the bank. We're getting money in the bank because we're not spending as much. And um, we got to come up with, with 60 grand down. Brother Bill goes, let's, let's start a GoFundMe. Brother Bill's going to get the money one month, you know. All right, Brother Bill, we did. And we did. And we got $12,000 in about a month. And they became Pekingese. Boom! <laughs> Flat that nose right out. It just stopped coming in. I mean, people gave. We got, we were, and we were excited. 12 grand, you know. <coughs> With what we already had. We get, we're pushing up around 20. You know, by the end of the year, we, by the end of 2020, we hit about $20,000 in, in the bank. That bill, and keep riding by that building. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. Still needs 60 grand. Well, right before the end of the year, I get a phone call from somebody. Out of the blue. And um, started talking to me about, I still remember that, you know, the, the vision of, you know, da, 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 da. Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. You know, the part about praying it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. We just haven't had anybody to lead the prayer. You need to lead the prayer. I mean, I, it's a little bold on her part, but anyway. <laughs> and I didn't get offended. I went, because I've always let somebody else, you know, uh, we, our assistant used to lead and different people used to lead. When they, when they said, I'm sorry, I know this is a little whatever, but. You need to be leading it. Right. And um, now, let's just be, can I be personal? I don't like praying in front of people. I, I'm a private prayer. I'm not a. I'm not a out in front of people prayer. It's, it's never been my thing. I like to be. I like privacy. I like. I like to be alone. You know. Just that's just me. And uh, but when they said it, well, you're right. You're right. And so February, we started with the Zoom prayer meetings. Yep. Doing something I don't like doing. In front of people. I, I like to pray. I just don't like to pray in front of people. You know? Because I don't, and it's, it probably comes out of that era of the charismatic judges. Who are judging everything you're saying, and, and they always have a better way of saying it, or a better way of praying it, or, or, or got a scripture as why you did it wrong. You know, the confession of people crowd. Like I turned around in the Kenneth Copeland meeting in 1981, shook a guy's hand. And, that, and back then I would wink. Hey, how you doing, brother? The Bible says he that winketh, and he starts quoting that scripture. And I'm thinking, I got your hand, and I'm feeling bam, bam coming on. Bam, 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 bam. You know, I'm not that saved. Okay? I'm. There's still some flesh that rises up. And it was in the rise up mode. I turned around and mm, no, no. It wouldn't look good at the Copa Convention for me. Bam, bam, somebody. <clears throat> so anyway, we started praying. We started praying about the vision. We're praying weekly. And people, you know, y'all guys are joining in and we're, we're praying that out. And we're, we're, we're just, we're praying. And, and we would get in the, as we, as we started moving along, <coughs> God would start speaking to us about stuff and we would, they would lead our prayers. Got into the summer and it really started getting into about the building. We, we kind of start praying about the vision coming, coming to pass, you know, the, you know, the spreading up the, the Eastern seaboard, et cetera, et cetera. And, but then having our own place started becoming, getting, getting bigger in that. What's this happen? See, I thought I was going to bring back the prayer. That time of corporate prayer and praying together, God began to direct us in what to pray. Now, I know we pray in tongues because we don't know how to pray as we ought. But as we pray in tongues and pray things out, then God will begin to speak to you and move you to pray certain things out where everybody understands what you're praying. And we moved corporately into our building, start praying things that start, start coming up. Uh, our land is Mark. Our, our building is, it's, it belongs to us. No, I mean, and so forth. Well, we, we, uh, and we kept keeping our own that, that, um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I left something out in February. We started the prayer. 
Then we had the single largest gift ever given to the church that month by someone who came, uh, came to me after a service, said, Pastor, God said, da 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 I'm like, go home and pray for a week because I don't want an emotional gift. I don't want a gift that something was said in the service that manipulated you in the emotions. So you go home and pray for a week. I'm not going to talk to you about this until you've, you've prayed about it for a week. Came back a week later and said, I'm supposed to do that. Okay. So we you know, call the place up for the, 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 uh, the, that property that we had seen the, the, the earlier summer. Said, we got the money. We're ready to buy it. We just sold it. Three days ago. For the price we were going to offer. We were going to offer two fifty on the three, that $300,000 property. Yep. I'm thinking. Man, you talk about disappointment. Got the money. Lost the building. See, the building. See, this is why God moved us to go look at that building. Why? Wow, it's easier to steer a moving car than one sitting in a parking spot. It's easier to steer a ship at sea than it is in port. If it's up against the docks, roped off, you can turn that captain's wheel all day long, and guess what? It ain't going to do nothing. But get it out to sea and start turning it, and it'll go all kinds of places. So that building was the pump primer on buildings. You see, God got us moving it wasn't the building we were supposed to have. Now, if I talk to you individually, I guarantee you most of you would come back and say, well, you know, it really, it was, it was okay. We could use it. It would work. Pastor wants to get it. He needs a building. We're going to go with him because we do need a building and this will work. I just don't like, woo! Can I tell you, tell you a secret? I wasn't, woo! About it. But it would work. It would give us a home. Well, so we start praying. We keep praying about our land, keep praying about our building, keep praying about our land, keep praying about our building, praying about the vision, praying about the land, praying about the building. Uh, get into the summer, and we just get, we really need, Lord, we have to have a building. It just got strong over the summer. We need our own place, a place that we can launch from, and, place, and, and, and you've got it marked out. Now, here's the thing. You can believe that something is right and try to push it that direction and God's got to change you to get it, get the right thing to you. I had said for years, we're going to go up on the 85 corridor, on the 68 corridor. That's where we want to be up in here, that 68 corridor. Wendover 68, right over here. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to be. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> and everybody was looking over there. Well, we get to the summer, and then end of the summer, Jesse says, what about this property? It's over on East Fork. It's about three-quarters of a mile from my house. I'm thinking, man, I can ride my bike over there. 1.75 acres of land, has a building on it that's usable. No, not, not perfect, and by any means not perfect. Same size as this building. The, the prop, that, that building, if y'all if went in it, had the same square footage this has. It just won't lay down anywhere near as near as nice. <laughs> Ceiling I could touch up and reach up and touch it. I mean, we walked to the door and it smelled like backed up sewage from the sewer gas. I mean, but it had, but you could build on it. It had already been approved for eleven thousand acre building. Eleven thousand acre building. Yeah, that's big. Eleven thousand. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put the Mall of America up. 11,000 square foot building. <clears throat> but Jesse kind of runs out. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They want, they want how much? Uh, nah, nah, nah. We keep praying and praying and praying. And finally, I said, Jesse, call the people. Let's go look at it. So we went over and looked at it. And went, well, you know, this would work. This room, we could convert to the sanctuary and go back here and build rooms for the classrooms, put a nursery in. It's got the bathrooms, da, 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 da. Got a little kitchen. And we'd go out here and build later. I mean, it's got, you know, got 1.75 acres of land, got some building room, not a whole lot, but, you know, enough room to build 11,000 square foot building, which is about five, 600 people. And then, you know, okay, double service that and, and then go build somewhere else. 
So the, the that building was going to be a stepping stone to another piece of property. All right? And so we bring the church, some folks from the church over, and we, like, walk in, we walk in, walk around and look at it. And, this, you know, I, and, you know, it's, it's the, it, well, this could work response. That's what it was. Dick's response. Dick, you don't, you don't play poker, do you? No. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, we can make this work, Pat. That's what work, Pat. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, you're not excited a bit. Okay. <laughs> and then Dr. Bill's always, you know, yeah, whatever, Pastor, we're with you. We're buying an outhouse, turning it into a church. That's right, Pastor, we'll make it work. We'll flush the world's sewers right down it and get them saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> Am I right? Yep. So anyway, so we make an offer. Now they're asking so much, too much for that building. It's not even funny. They paid a hundred thousand dollars for it seven years ago. They went over. They went three hundred thousand. And uh, the um, Holy Ghost on the board said, <laughs> "We ain't offering that much. How do we got the money? We ain't offering them that much. Okay, we offer two twenty-five. We did. We offered two twenty-five. They came back at three hundred. <laughs> Plus ten thousand dollars due diligence. Meaning that if something didn't work out, they got to keep my ten thousand dollars. Uh, you guys aren't interested in dealing, are you? I said no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that sold on that property. Well, here we go again. I got another place that we can have. We can get a church. You know, and listen about here. We, it's amazing as you're praying things out and moving in directions, how you can get so dissatisfied with the place that you are. Not that there's something wrong with it. It's just it's time to move. And you couldn't stay satisfied there anymore. And we just couldn't stay satisfied in borrowing the church. And nobody wanted to go back to the community center. They still weren't open for us to meet in. But we were like, we were starting to look back at moving back to the community center if we had to. And, but I got a word from the Lord. I didn't tell anybody. The Lord said, you will not go back into the community center. I'm thinking, but you know, they're getting ready to raise the price on the church. The community center be half that. He said, you will not go back to the community center. You will have your own place. You will not go back to the community center. Okay. Well, this one just fell through. Two down, strike two, year and a half, strike two. Well, then I, I call them. Actually, when we started looking at the property on East Fork, I called an old member of the church who was here when we first came to Greensboro, Jeff White. He was in real estate. I knew it's on Facebook. He was on. I said, Jeff, I said, we need a realtor that represents us with this property. And, and do you mind? Oh, I'd, I'd be honored to. Right, great. Right. So he came over and he negotiated with them on that property in East Fork and it fell through. And, uh, and when he called me and I said, look, we're, we're just not interested. I'm not, I'm not paying them 300,000. It's just not worth it. I said, we'd be upside down walking in the door. And if we needed to sell it, we couldn't, he can't sell it at 300. We wouldn't be able to sell it at 300. And, uh, he sent me this property out in pleasant garden. The banished lands of the southeast <laughs> out in the boonies. You, you feel like Pleasant Gardens out in the boonies. It's 4.3 miles from the interstate. Yeah. It's closer to the interstate than my house is. <laughs> and I live in Jamestown. It's more than 4.3 miles to get to the interstate. I like, good gracious. Out in the boonies. I'm like, he sends me the file and, and says, well, take a look at this. And I look at him thinking, that's a plastic card. That's, Lord, we've been talking about 68 corridor and that side of Greensboro for years. Honestly, I'm just kind of, I'm, 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 I'm kind of, I'm, I look at the pictures. Yeah, that's nice. But it says, this plastic card and Jesus, they're piping the sunshine in. <laughs> but see, we've been praying. Now, let me say this. While we, were pray while we were looking at that building at East Fork, 
We rode by one Sunday, and there was another couple out there looking at it. And I got home and said, Lord, our property is our property. See, I didn't say that property. I said our property. When I started praying, I couldn't say that property when I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. I said, our property is marked out. It belongs to us. Nobody else can have it. Somebody wants it, you're going to give them something different or something better for them. But that our property is our property in Jesus' name. I didn't know I was talking about a different property. See? Because we've been praying about our property. Got, got Tuesday night, prayer, Lord, and we prayed that on Tuesday night. Our property belongs to us. It's marked out. You know, our, it was, it's marked, it says Faith and Victory Church of Greensboro. It belongs to us. Nobody can have it. We prayed that out in prayer. So Jeff sends me that stuff, and I, I look at it, and, and I'm just contemplating a little bit. Sent pictures of Jane. Well, that's nice. But it's Pleasant Garden. I mean, we just have that Pleasant Garden thing going on. And the Lord spoke to me. See, when you're praying things about things, then he'll talk to you in line with your prayer. And we're having corporate prayer going on. And so he's speaking about what we're praying about. He says, now, how many more churches can you put out on the 68 corridor? <laughs> Church on 68's out there. The triad church is out there. Some has gone out there toward Oak Ridge. Crossroads has gone out there um, just over the county line. I mean, the, all, they got all these big churches out there on that. How many more can you put out there? Good point, Lord. <laughs> but, 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 he said, and then he said, if I could come up with my butts and why, why fours and whatever, he said, who's going to take care of my people out there? And I said, I will. I will. That was, that was his, his response. How many more can you put here? And who's going to take care of these? I said, I'll go. So we brought you guys over. I didn't get one single of the, oh, that's a work responses. When we walked in the building, Everybody that walked in the building had, they were like starry eyed. <laughs> like, I just walked into the throne room. This is manna from heaven. This is the place. It's God. Amen. Now, the first time, when we first came in, Michelle was here. We were coming to you know, come and look at it with Jeff and then inviting the church over. Michelle Thorne was here, sitting here. Uh, she had come to let him in. And we got to meet her and got to talking. Say, so me and Jeff were walking around, her and Janie were talking. Come to find out, she's Church of God. We're Pentecostal holiness. They were charismatic. They kind of kind of gone charismatic. We've gone charismatic. We had so many things in common. Amen. Similar type visions about the property and so forth would be used. It was just so God. Because see, they had been praying that God would send somebody who would keep this a church and would take it and, and use it for the kingdom of God. They had had four offers on this building, a pet supply store, a daycare, a lawn and garden store, and an aerobics or work, workout studio. All made offers on this property. But we were praying, Lord, our property is marked out, and nobody else can have our property. We didn't know that it wasn't East Fork. We're thinking East Fork, but we're talking here. See, we're praying, and a lot of times we're praying things out, and we think we're praying one thing, but in the Spirit, we're really praying something completely different, and God knows it. And that's why he's leading you to pray. He wouldn't let me say that East Fort property is our property. I couldn't get it out of my mouth. I tried. He wouldn't let it come out. And so I had to go to our, our property. Amen. <coughs> See, in this corporate prayer, we were agreeing together that our property is ours. It's marked out in the spirit. Our name is on. We may not know exactly where it is, but it's marked out in the spirit. 
and nobody else can have it. And all this was being set up. See, in 2020, one, God began to move on her heart that it was time to sell. So they had the Skywalk roof and come out and fix the roof and all this kind of stuff and start getting stuff ready to get it put on the market. They just put on the market in October when we made an offer in November. And there's four places made offers. They want to turn it into, I mean, I mean, I make a great aerobic studio, but you know what? This was for the kingdom of God. This was built for the kingdom of God. It wasn't built for aerobics. Amen. Unless we're doing Holy Ghost running around the church. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> have a Holy Ghost hoedown. Glory to God. We're going to have some of them too. All right, anyway. We're praying things out. See, when you continue in prayer, when you're in prayer corporately, and God is steering this ship, Things are going on. So, uh, you know, we come and look at it. And we, we, we tell Jeff, say, well, make an offer. He said, what do you want to offer? Well, 50 less than what they're asking. He said, that's fair. Um, so we made that offer on, he makes it on Tuesday morning. We all came out here on Monday night. This is before Christmas. It's, he got into December is where all this is going on. Now, we've been praying since January. About the vision, about our building, about the vision, about our building. I'm going somewhere all this. Y'all hold on to your drawers. Pardon me, your undergarments. Anyway. <laughs> Down south, they're drawers. That means two things. It means the thing you put your clothes in, the things you wear. It means both. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um. As we're praying this out, you know, and so forth, we made the offer. And, of course, he calls us back on that Tuesday night. He makes it on Tuesday morning. We wait all day. Like, you know, of course, you're I mean, here's what we're thinking. I wonder what they're going to counter at. So we knew they would counter. I mean, that was, that's just almost obvious. We're going to, and we offered what we thought was a fair price with giving us some room for the counter. They came back at 25. You know, we thought they'd come back at 25 more than we offered, which would be 25 less than they were asking. Which would have been reasonable. We thought that, well, that's reasonable. Got the money in the bank. What if they won't, what if they won't count? What if they go to stop full? We're going to have to dive into the cash reserve. We won't have money to do some stuff with, but we can make it work. Because we really thought this was our building. We, I mean, we, it's when we walked in and sat down in here and everybody in the church, the way everybody responded, it's like we knew this was our building. And we could have church day one. We didn't have to do, we didn't have to paint. We didn't have to decorate. We didn't, we didn't have to bring chairs in here. They already had chairs in here. Speaker system was all set up. Now, it was older. It was different. We, what, it, we needed to make it our style eventually. But it was church usable immediately. Day one, which we did. Closed on the 28th. Had it on service, service on Sunday in here. Boom. So it worked. Okay. We we're excited about being able to do that. Um. But when they, he calls us and makes the offer, the counter offer at 50 grand less than we offered. Yeah. hundred thousand off asking price. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm sitting here with Janie in the back of the car. We just walked out of La Hacienda over in High Point and we, we got, well, and we're standing at the back of the car because we're walking across the parking lot as a call comes in and we're standing here like this and we got the phone and okay, Jeff, well, Janie's here. We're on speakerphone. He says, well, they offered, they, they counted as we thought they would. Well, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, now he's going to come back at 25 more than we offered. You know, he says, that, um, uh, and they counted it. And he says the number was just 50,000 less than what we offered. And I got the phone like this. Now look at Jamie. And we just said, he said, and he goes, yes, I said. <laughs> because we didn't say anything. Is that an iPhone glitch or what? <clears throat> I said 50,000 less than you offered. Then we went, wow, you got to be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. They offered, they prayed and said, that they had, they were supposed to do something better than what you asked for. That's what God spoke to their heart. Like, then you think, man, why did I offer a hundred? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing now. 
I'm not, I'm not really, I'm just teasing there. Um, yes, make the offer, sign it. Yes. Well, we need to do an inspection. I don't care. I got money to take care of anything in the inspection. <clears throat> so he does. They accept it, obviously. And, um, but we had prayed this out over prayer. And during our time of corporate prayer, see, some things happen. As we're all together praying, God's moving us to pray about a building. Pray that our, our, our building is marked out. Nobody else can have it. Things are going on that we, we're assuming are meaning one thing or meaning something totally different. And then when we walked into what God had for us, it was, a, it was like, this is it. This is perfection. This is exactly. I went to a couple of members of the church and, and, and said, now this is going to be further for you to get to church. And, and they, they, they did kind of hesitate on that part. But when they walked in, they were like, this is home. This is where we're supposed to be. Because, you know, I knew. I guess, it's, a long, it's, a, it's a little extra drive for you. Um, and we don't want to lose any members moving. We don't want to lose anybody making a move. You know, uh, because we're, you, we're your pastors. We're not the building. Okay? But um, with the new freeway and the new loop finishing up next year, I mean, there's not going to be anywhere in Greensboro you can't get to pretty quick with the, with the uh, completion of the loop. That's 42 miles of loop out there when they finish. But you'll be at 70 miles an hour, it'll be a 70 mile per hour corridor from where you can get on that loop, you can get around anywhere in town that you need to get. Hate going up north just because it's so bad to get up there if you take the city streets. It's just heating backwards here, over here. Over here. Nothing's a good straight shot. <laughs> that loop may change that. Man, it used to take us a half hour, 45 minutes to get to the Natural Science Center. We can get up there in, tw in less than 20 from my house. I'm busting that 70 all to pieces. Anyway, so we prayed that out. We got the building. We're in here. We've been doing all this work, you know. You know, we, we've, we've changed the colors. We've decorated the platform. We've done the out most of the outside work. We've... Um, done some repairs. There was some, so there was some, there were some issues that needed to be addressed. Uh, we just got the roof fixed this week. Um, they, we, it started leaking real bad uh, past, past month. They came out and uh, it cost money to do that, but we got it done. We had money to do it with. Um, got the plumbing fixed where they couldn't get the outside faucet to work because <laughs> it was corroded on forever. Millennium Jesus returning stuff. <laughs> okay, it wasn't coming off. You know, God broke the, inside the wall when he was trying to get it off. I already knew what to do because we broke off the one in the, in the sinks trying to get it off. I had done that earlier. Um, had to put in the electrical circuits to put the TV up there and the, you know, the cameras. And we've had to do some things. We've got it. Now, we're almost done. Like, like I said, we get the front awning and get a storage unit because we can get all our stuff. And what we do, storage building, we just look at it this way. If I had to pay $400 a month on paying for the storage unit over time, that's better than paying $400 a month to such and such storage unit company because that's 100% interest. If I was paying 25% interest for this, it's better than the 100% the interest out there. Okay. So we're waiting for that. <laughs> That estimate to put your son and his, his uh, boss to work, you know, if it's in the right ballpark, hallelujah. Yeah, you've got to be in the right ballpark. But, you know, still, if it's within reasonable, I want to do it. Get it done, you know, and to shift that money over to paying for what we own. The no need paying for the storage unit, $400 a month, then I could be paying for the construction of a building behind our building with that same money. And if, I, and if I had to pay some interest on it over three or four years, I will own it at the end of that. Rather than in three or four years at the, at the storage unit, we won't have anything except we had four years of use. I won't, still won't have anything to show for it. So now if you've got an extra 10 grand or so laying around, we'll give to that. We'll just we'll receive it. We'll go ahead and pay cash for part of it. Amen. So are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm serious. Look, you people are awesome. I've given as much people I've ever seen. 
But now, all that being said, now we have prayed in a building. We got five acres of land here. About three and a half is cleared. What you see is about the cleared land is about three and a half of our five acres. We got more land than it could be cleared. Behind this is four acres and another two acre tract. That's undeveloped, just cleared. So, I mean, we could be looking at buying more land. Amen. Expanding the whole property. I mean, this is this potential here is something else. Okay. Now. We can't just stop praying because we got to the building. Because the building is what? The building is the staging area for our purpose. It's not the purpose. This wasn't the end. Remember, God doesn't do, uh, he, got, he, he always has a purpose in what he does. He got us out of debt. What for? To lead, and and he, he had us look at this building and look at this building and do this and do that. For what? To get us here. But why did he get us here? It wasn't so we could be here. He did not put us here solely so we could have a building. And we can go, whoa. And I drive up out here and I just think, this is just awesome. I mean, it's just so much peacefulness about this property. Yeah. It's ours. It belongs to us. There is so much I almost cried the, uh, this weekend when I was finalizing some of these faith and victory church things that we are now expedition church. We now have our own land. We now have our own property, our own building. You know, all of this, uh, I, I wrote to one of the kids on, on the Facebook family thing that um, the remnants of the old republic have been swept away. <laughs> Because we went out and looked online because Brother Bill, I said, Brother Bill, keep checking, see if they, they've, because I haven't gotten the paperwork in the mail yet, but you can look online and see if it's been registered with the Secretary of State. So he got off the phone about 10 minutes later. Here's a link. It's, it's, it's settled. I don't remember which exactly what you said, but here's a link. Go out there and it goes, Expedition Church of the Triad, legal name, former legal names. Now, if you don't remember when we first moved here, the name of this church was Christ Jesus Ministries Incorporated. First thing we did was change the name to be more churchy to Faith and Victory Church. Okay, the previous pastor of that church, they, they wanted to be Christ Jesus Ministries and whatever their whole thinking was. I thought, yeah, that doesn't sound enough like a church. You know, it just sounded like a, a, like a, like a, a teaching organization. Or a, a teach, actually, their, their sign said Word Training Center. Didn't say church. So our, our idea was to turn it into a church. So we changed our church name that we came out of Greenville with, <coughs> with their permission, Faith and Victory Church of Greensboro. Legally changed it. So you look out there, it says legal, previous legal name, previous legal name, legal name. Okay. This is now Expedition Church of the Triad. Everything about us is our mailing address. Our, I mean, we wipe, we're wiping away our old mailing address. We're wiping away the past. The only thing we still have is our phone number. <laughs> that's one of the things we've held on to that phone number because we didn't want to, because people communicate that may look you up from an old phone number. They will have that phone number. Okay. But they're going to get Expedition Church of the Triad when they call because that's what happens on the answer machine. Okay. The 852 -0088. When we left the business park, I put that on a cell phone, had it ported over to a cell phone to keep the number. That's the only reason I did it, so we could keep that number. And we got over here, I ported it to this building. So um, we are, we are, uh, we're, we're moving away from that. But now, all that, they bring us back here. Now our corporate prayer has to reshift from the building, the land, back into our purpose, winning the loss. Seeing the vision of 88 come to pass. What our role in that is. Now, as we pray, guess what? See, God didn't bring us out here, put us in this property. Are you listening to me now? Listen to me. For the purpose of us staying like we were, just having our own building. That wasn't the purpose. It wasn't the purpose so we could just meet together as our group and stay together. 
in this building. It was to have an impact. Are you here? To grow, to do the work of God, to see the vision come to pass. Amen. So we're going to, so we're going to begin moving, moving our prayer back into that direction and follow him as he leads us. Because he's, listen, he'll lead us to do this. And there'll be a purpose in it. And I wanted to share and this. I'm not sharing all that. I know with next month, and I don't know if you're going to pull any clips out of this service or not, but, or, or you're going to do an interview type thing, you know. I like the interview type thing better. Um, oh, we found some slides in, in Janie's desk drawer. We took out the storage unit from the fourth anniversary. And it has pictures of the old metal building on Lee Street when we first moved into the business park over on Holden 85, has pictures of the inside of the Lee Street building, has pictures of the kids when, the, when Nathan's like a week old, all of us together with, with Nathan as a week old. And Janie and I were babies. Oh, I mean, oh God, you were young looking. <laughs> I'm talking about me. You know, I mean, I'm like, Wow. Wow, then we got pictures of, the, of, of the services in the other building in the beginning when we had the cross on the back wall before we did any remodeling in there other than the initial setup. Um, Jerry was over there. Janice was over there. <laughs> I had to preach services thinking, are they ever going to get it right? <laughs> Having were at their wedding. When I introduced him, what did I say? <laughs> finally! <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you, finally! I couldn't pass that one up. I didn't want to pass it up. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I didn't even try. I put it into the notes for the, for the, the service. I'm messing on them now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyway, so we got those converted, digitized yesterday at a place in town, took all those slides and digitized for us so we can use in a presentation for the um, anniversary um, homecoming dedication service. But, but everybody, our corporate prayer brought us here. Amen. It brought us out of a land of desolation into this land. And then it's going to take us into walking in our purpose and being effective in the kingdom of God as we have never been before. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we're going, to, we're going to walk in things and see things that we dreamed of and haven't. And listen, we've seen a bunch in this church over the years. But there's going to be places we walk we haven't walked heretofore in the purposes of God. And seeing the hand of God work and move and do. Seeing people brought in. Lives transformed. Yesterday at the Yankee Stadium, Ray Jean was up there. Ray Jean Wilson. Some, I don't know who was doing the service. But 25,000 people got saved in a service at Yankee Stadium yesterday. 25,000. God is at work. You look at the world news, you look at world events, don't worry about it. We have a job, we have a purpose, we have a calling. We're going to pray this thing out and walk in and God's going to lead us and guide us in our corporate prayer, this time together. And I didn't cover all the notes, but that's okay. Just go look at prayer and the book of Acts, you'll get it, all right? And I wasn't going to share this way this morning. The Lord led me to do that because it fit. The prayers, the pray. Over that span of time is what brought us into this. It brought us into it. So when God get and, and listen, I mean, Pastor Karen could have gone, Pastor. I ain't telling him. I ain't telling Pastor that. Oh, oh. Well, Dad, we've been in here quicker if you're going ahead and obey God. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Can't you use somebody else? Tell Cindy Duvall to call him. <laughs> She's probably thinking the next service. Some bozo called me and told me I need to do how to run my church. <laughs> I did get up the next service. And somebody called me and they're right. This is what we're going to do. Hallelujah. We've prayed and see, obedience, although three months late. Now that I know that, you're toast anytime I need it. <laughs> we could have missed our opportunity. I'm teasing you now. We were able to pray in. But see, we, we weren't. We start with a narrative too often thinking we know everything and we try to force it to go a certain way. Whereas we allow God to lead us in diversions in prayer or different directions in prayer as he saw fit. And we just followed that instead of us trying to lead him. Yeah. See, this is where we miss it in prayer. Sometimes I'm going to share this. We'll start out and we'll try to force something the way we think it should go instead of starting out and then allowing him to lead us in the way it should go and moving with him. And if it comes out, well, that's not what I was thinking. Let's, let's go there. <clears throat> you might be going, but that, that's not what I'm thinking. But you got to follow him because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our, not our thoughts, saith the Lord. And as he leads us, and then we're going, well, you know what? I was thinking this, but you know that? Yeah. You do know what you're doing, doing don't you, Lord? You'll find that out. You stay with him long enough and let him lead you enough. You'll find out he knows what he's doing. Can you say amen? All right. So. We need to continue in prayer. Be steadfast in prayer, corporate prayer, the church together. Can you say amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, that's where we're going to quit. Hope y'all enjoyed them. Hope that can teach you something. You know, that, Doug Jones told us something. <clears throat> Doug is the, um, oh, I, I know we got to do the, we got communion. Doug is the um, head of um, Rama Ministerial and alumni at Rama. Used to live with Brother Hagen when he was young for a couple of years. Um, been with the ministry for decades. He left at one time, came back. Okay. Let's finish today. We love you. God bless you. I want you to remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. See you Wednesday night here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Until then, be blessed to the Lord. In Jesus' name.